So, hi, good morning, and welcome to this open air uh, Nexus uh, webinar. Uh, before we we go on with the webinar, I just want to go through some housekeeping rules that you are uh, already uh, used to see. So, uh, this event will be recorded, as you as you will see. The participants we ask the participants to have your microphones off. Um, if you want to participate, use your chat to introduce yourself, to interact with the participants or address questions to the speakers. And at the end, we, you can always uh, raise your hand to speak, open your microphone and, and your camera and address your uh, comments or doubts to Manolis that will be here to, to help you. The presentation and the recording will be shared with you by email, but we also upload it in Zenodo and YouTube, and uh, we'll also update it in the open air portal. And do share uh, your, this webinar through our social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, use our hashtag openairEU or openair underscore uh, amnesia. So today uh, we have um, Manolis Terovitis from Matina Research Center that will present uh, the, the Amnesia tool, I Accuracy Data Anonymization, uh, a tool that helps uh, you to transform personal data to anonymous data. Uh, and now, without further ado, I'll just at the end of the webinar, sorry for that. At the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session where uh, Manolis will try to, to address your comments and doubts and suggestions. Okay. And now I'll pass the floor to Manolis. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation to be with us here. And the floor is yours. Thank, thanks a lot, Paula, for inviting me and for the introduction. Um, I'm happy to be here and presenting Amnesia, which is a work we have, uh, a project we have worked uh, for a long time. Uh, maybe some of you have already seen it, died, or have heard about anonymization, but I will try in the presentation to start from the beginning and explain when, what data anonymization is. So what I'm presenting is Amnesia, which is uh, an open source and free to use tool that uh, anonymizes data. And by anonymization, we mean here anonymization in the sense that uh, GDPR does. Um, so GDPR clears, regulates uh, efficiently uh, the, the usage of personal data. So, uh, it, it makes the, uh, the the field clear, but also imposes some serious limitations on how to use personal data. So uh, if you want to use uh, data for personal data for a specific purpose, you either have to have a law that supports it, uh, or a contract, or user consent. It also has uh, a window for, uh, for using them in research, but that does not cover any case or any purpose in research or exchanging uh, or exchanging data with other organizations. So when usually data are used uh, for research uh, to be shared, for example, in a project, they are used based on consent. Uh, and consent might be uh, difficult to manage and track. It might be revoked. Uh, it uh, limits your purpose if you find something new. and you might get it to use it, but uh, it doesn't remove the dangers of uh, uh, leakage or for, uh, for uh, the danger of uh, data being misused, misused and the data controller remains responsible for that. So what we're trying to do with uh, anonymization and with amnesia is um, to unlock uh, the, the potential of uh, data to take uh, the useful information that lies in uh, the personal data outside the, outside the GDPR scope. So uh, a key observation here is that uh, when you usually use data for research, in many, many cases, you do not need 
to actually identify the person, right? Uh, maybe when you do medical research and you do a clinical study, of course, you need to know the person. But if you want to uh, train a, a model on uh, on data from uh, from personal habits or uh, in several fields or get statistical information, there you only need the statistical information that lies in the personal data and not the identifying information. So what anonymization does is this transformation from personal data with stat to statistical data by removing the identifying information and preserving as much as possible the statistical information. Um, in this process, there is a reduction in data quality, uh, which when you have a small initial data set can be important, the larger the data set grows, then this reduction in data quality becomes less and less important. So anonymization un unlocks uh, the, the potential of personal data. It removes the constraints uh, that GDPR imposes on them. Uh, I need to stress here that anonymized data will be always be different from the original data. Uh, anonymization is a one way uh, transformation of the data. Uh, the, what we provide here is actually a statistical guarantee that no, no one can reverse this transformation. Uh, so this is uh, uh, anonym uh, th this makes it GP GDPR compliant and guarantees that the resulting data will not be identifying. Um, and uh, I have also to, to highlight here that pseudonymization, and anonymization are different things. Um, in everyday language, uh, in everyday practice, uh, we, we use the term anonymization to cover usually both cases. Now, pseudonymization is the removal of direct identifiers and the, the replacement with uh, pseudonym or even uh, no replacement at all, right? Anything can actually act uh, as a pseudonym. The, the key difference is that when you just remove the, uh, the direct identifiers, you reduce the risk that someone will be identified, but you get no guarantee that uh, people cannot be re-identified. And... Okay, I will give you an example for this um, a bit later. Uh, the idea is that if you remove the direct identifiers and you not, do not pay attention to the rest of the data, then other secondary parts of descriptive information can be used to re-identify a person. So pseudonymous data and pseudonymization reduces the risk of re-identification, but according to GDPR, this data remain uh, personal data, since you have no guarantee that someone is not re-identifiable. And they lie inside the scope of GDPR with all the limitations of GDPR. This is not the case for anonymization. Anonymized data, outside the GDPR. The way we guarantee this is that uh, there is a statistical guarantee about the risk of information leakage. And according to, to my view, th this is the, uh, the most uh, productive way to share data with third parties that you either don't fully trust or you have not uh, gotten consent uh, in the beginning for sharing them for research purposes. So the, uh, I told you mostly the good things about anonymization, but uh, we need to be clear on its limitations. Uh, you always lose some information because uh, you need to, to remove identifying information and the uh, data quality is reduced. There are some gray boundaries between anonymized and pseudonymized data. Uh, the idea here is that you, uh, that every privacy guarantee reduces the information risk, but it is uh, uh, information leakage, but it's uh, not completely removed. So you need to make a study. Uh, the, the DPO needs to decide on the correct parameters and the correct uh, guarantee. Uh, th there is uh, room for decisions and statistical guarantees only are models for a social notion called privacy. They're not by definition privacy. It's guarantee uh, covers it uh, 
in a different way. And at least at this stage, it takes some effort from the from the user's part to anonymize the data uh, because it is a novel a novel process. We do not have uh, yet enough uh, information from user experience to be able to offer automations. Although for uh, Amnesia, a key uh, a, a key. Uh, objective of uh, in our development is to make it uh, effortless for the user to anonymize data. And I think compared to uh, other solutions that exist, we're one of the most user-friendly. Now, <clears throat> to elaborate more in the scenarios that uh, uh, anonymization works best, uh, I think uh, in the general, in, if you want to see the, the different scenarios, they all fall inside data sharing. You, you anonymize the data to share them. So if you're a practitioner that collects data and then wants to outsource them uh, for research purposes, anonymization can help you a lot because it reduces the actual risk and uh, it, uh, it, it enables you in cases to circumvent uh, a consent or a detailed consent, right? You might just get a consent to anonymize and then you can do with the result whatever you want because it's statistical data. It's a way to give data to recipients that you know do not fully trust. Um, this does not mean it's a, you give to someone you don't want to, but uh, you can give it openly on the internet for everyone to write. Uh, you are not obliged to get an NDA or a contract with them. And um, this uh, really simplifies with technical means uh, a process that might be uh, quite uh, difficult from an administrative point of view. I would also like to uh, highlight here uh, to highlight here the difference with encryption. Encryption methods protect the channel. Uh, they protect the data transfer, but the recipient of encrypted data usually gets the key to decrypt them and process them. So encryption can help with the security and confidentiality of data sharing, but it cannot help you uh, in the, uh, from the data recipient, right? You need to trust the data recipient. Um, and the last thing is uh, you use anonymization when some reduction to data to information quality is acceptable. Uh, if uh, the recipient wants to do some kind of statistical analysis, if not, if uh, no reduction in the data accuracy is acceptable, then anonymization probably is not the way to go. So why should someone use Amnesia? Uh, first of all, there are very, very few tools that uh, do data anonymization in the GDPR sense. Um, there's uh, another academic tool with more or less uh, similar functionality with Amnesia. Uh, and I've seen in uh, SAP, they have some uh, functions for differential privacy, but there's no tool at the moment that's uh, commercial or widely used. Uh, all these tools, and a bit uh, explorative uh, anonymization has been used uh, in very few public cases. Okay, the most famous one is the use of anonymization techniques for the publishing of uh, US Census data in 2020. Uh, but uh, we have seen, and with Amnesia, many companies that are interested for using it, uh, the confirmed cases of any kind of anonymization are still very few. So we, in, with Amnesia, we try to uh, make anonymization simpler for everyone. So we gave focus on user friendliness and less on having many different guarantees and many, many different features. So we try to be user friendly and uh, always to improve on the interface. Uh, it's... Uh, private by design, you, it's not an online service. We have an online service for uh, demo and training purposes, but if you want to anonymize sensitive data, you download it to your local uh, computer or local internet, and then it works locally. So no data leave your premises. Uh, we give uh, several tools to the user to customize uh, 
the anonymization process. Uh, not many different privacy guarantees, but several different options in guiding the anonymization to reduce the information loss. Uh, we are trying to support many different types of data, uh, which is quite important in practice. Uh, and uh, where I think the only solution that supports uh, sparse multidimensional data, this uh, uh, what we call in databases set valued uh, data is maybe an example is uh, a retail store uh, retail store bill where you have an arbitrary number of uh, transactions from a very large domain and finally we uh, we have a clear architectural separation between the interface and the anonymization engine so uh, amnesia anonymization engine is easily uh, integrate, uh, it's easy to integrate in different IT systems and uh, to uh, get it in your own workflow and make the anonymization work seamlessly uh, for the end user. Okay, it's some years now already up. We have more than 100,000 visitors, uh, 400,000 page views, and more than 7K downloads. So we have gotten a lot of feedback. Uh, bugs have been reduced, and uh, it's kind of mature. Um, I don't think many details on uh, the status. Uh, it will be given here. We support now K anonymity and K anonymity, and where we have in uh, a non-public uh, yet version uh, uh, a differentially private uh, anonymization algorithm, uh, which will be released in the next few, mo uh, few months. Uh, and uh, we offer also a REST API that allows this integration. Uh, with uh, other work, uh, workflows and data management uh, platforms. So it's not uh, it, that anonymization does not need to happen through Amnesia web uh, uh, graphical interface. And uh, after a few years of use, bugs have been diminished and uh, scenarios work uh, without uh, anonymization scenarios work out without problems. Now, uh, I will go back to uh, anonymization itself and explain the difference with uh, pseudonymization. Uh, and I will get to, an, uh, to a real example that comes from one of the first pa uh, research papers in data anonymization. And it shows the dangers of uh, pseudonymizing and uh, not uh, uh, paying attention in uh, secondary and descriptive information. Now, on the left cycle here, you can see uh, data that were published uh, in the UK as, stati as you know, statistical data from hospitals. Uh, for each uh, hospital visits, uh, the, uh, the hospitals in Massachusetts uh, provided this information. Uh, they had uh, removed the name, the social security number, and they were just saying that uh, someone who was born on this date, uh, from this, uh, staying at this zip code, and uh, uh, they reported also the sex uh, of uh, the patient, and then some other descriptive information came and had this diagnosis. Now, they considered this safe because there was no name and uh, there were no direct identifiers. You could treat this data again considered as pseudonymous. So they probably had, you know, some uh, number also that uh, identified the record, which would be the pseudonym. But at the same time, from the voters list, uh, uh, it was available. Uh, the information on the right cycle was available, which was the name uh, of uh, a voter, uh, their address, and Again, they had the zip code, birth date, and sex. So uh, this data was not sensitive and it was public, but a name was there associated with this uh, descriptive information that we call quasi identifier. At the same time, there was a second database where sensitive information was published without names, but with these quasi identifiers. So by linking this 
these two public databases, you could re-identify uh, the persons that visited the hospital. So this was a privacy breach that concerned almost everyone had, uh, who was on the voters list and visited the hospital. And these are the dangers of pseudonymization that come through the processing of secondary information. Now, one of the simplest guarantees that we offer uh, through amnesia is key anonymity. And the idea here is that we transform its entry to a form where it becomes indistinguishable for other K minus one entries. So if you have this very simplified uh, medical uh, database that you see here, uh, this has been uh, pseudonymized. There's a pseudonym, which is an arbitrary ID. And then there's this descriptive information that can act as quasi identifier, which is the zip code, the age of the uh, patient, and their nationality. And then you have uh, the diagnosis. Now, now just by know uh, in, in this data set, just by knowing uh, some bits of this information, you can re identify a person, right? If I know that uh, Ivan is 20 years old, then just by looking here, I know that this is his record. There's only one who's uh 21 years old so i know he suffers from heart disease now the simplest way to anonymize this is to reduce the information uh, uh the, the uh, to the information accuracy in the quasi identifiers in such way that groups of k here k equals to four identical uh clusters appear in the anonymized data so now, if I know that uh, Ivan is 20 years old and appears in this data set, then I can only match his, uh, I can only uh, infer that uh, his record is one of these uh, first four and I can no longer identify the exact record. So I can provide here a statistical guarantee that whatever you know as background information about a person, there will always be uh, K candidate records on the published data set. So uh, this is an irreversible transformation where whatever I know, I cannot really go back and discover the, the, actu uh, the actual information, uh, the actual record and the actual information. Uh, the price I paid for this is that I have lost data accuracy. I have completely removed the nationality information. I've removed the least, the least uh, significant bits about uh, the zip code. Uh, zip code is actually a structured uh, uh, number where the least uh, significant bits show uh, more detailed administrative regions. And as you remove them, you go to broader administrative regions. And then I have removed exact age and I just have age categories. So uh, I paid the price in terms of information accuracy. And what I got was a guarantee that uh, no one can be really identified. Um, I will not get in, now in, the, in, in this uh, webinar in uh, uh, the discussion about uh, the, the strengths of different privacy guarantees. Even this guarantee can allow some information uh, leakage and uh, I will always be able to infer some things from the published data. Uh, the only way to not infer uh, anything is not to publish anything, but this actually beats the purpose of data sharing. But uh, I have reduced uh, the, the probability of identifying someone in a formal way and uh, with a strict INT. So I can now treat this data statistical and not personal data that can be more widely used and shared. Now I will get to few technical details that I will need to uh, then show you in the demo. I think uh, the part that requires the most effort from uh, the point of view of the user is how to guide uh, the anonymization algorithm in reducing the accuracy of the descriptive information. Uh, uh, let me go back and uh, show you again here the example. Now, the, uh, the age of a patient was transformed to an age category. Uh, what the algorithm would do is uh, it will try to, uh, to remove as little information as possible to achieve the desired uh, privacy guarantee. 
So this will happen automatically, but it needs as input from the user uh, a kind of uh, generalization rules of replacement rules of specific values with more generic values that makes uh, sense. For example, uh, the algorithm did not decide itself here to use these categories. At some point, the user must give the algorithm eight categories that make sense, right? Depending on the type of analysis, the domain, uh, maybe there would be different age categories like um, less than 18, more than 18, or more than 65, depending if uh, these uh, age uh, thresholds have legal, uh, uh, legal extensions or they are important in uh, the scientific uh, domain field. So in some way, someone must in, uh, give directions to the algorithm on how to do these replacements. Also in the zip code, the algorithm uh, needs to know that it should start by removing the least important bits. So this information is offered uh, to the algorithm by what we call a generalization hierarchy. So the generalization hierarchy uh, can be considered as a set of uh, generalization rules where each specific value can be replaced with a more generic value in a way that makes sense. And also these rules are organized that we start from the bottom where the whole do domain of different values appear and they are progressively reduced up to just one value. Uh, having the, uh, these rules organized uh, like uh, a tree al allows the algorithm to guarantee that it will find the solution always, that if it goes from the bottom uh, to the root of the tree uh, upwards, then always it will get a solution that has less values and uh, greater chances of uh, satisfying the privacy guarantee. So. When preparing for the data anonymization, the user has to create uh, these, uh, these rules for uh, data replacement. I'm showing you here an example, uh, which is a, a geographic example that easily makes sense, where it takes countries and groups them to some wider region and then to even wider regions. So Greece and Italy are parts of South Europe and South Europe along with North Europe make the whole Europe, uh, right? So this is uh, simple information that needs to be uh, given to, uh, to, to Amnesia and to actually any, any, uh, any other anonymization tools that relies on the generalization principle in order to produce meaningful results. Um, I will not get into details. There are ways that these different ways that uh, can be used uh, by the data anonymization algorithm. For example, you can always go just one level up or in some branches, you can go one level up and others not. And this uh, makes it different if it's a uh, full domain generalization uh, like here or um, you can have local uh, recording where only some values are generalized and some others are not, depending on, uh, on if it's needed or not for, uh, then, uh, then, um, for getting the privacy guarantee that you want. Um, the, most complex, the more complex the anonymization process is, the better quality of the results. Uh, but sometimes it will take more effort on users, on users part or um, it will need more specialized algorithms uh, for data analysis to be able to exploit uh, the differences in granularity of the result. So uh, one thing that's, uh, that takes effort is creating these rules. And after I'm done with the presentation, I will show you a demo of Amnesia and show you how he, he, Amnesia can help you to uh, create them uh, with uh, less, uh, as less effort as possible. Now, apart for, from K-anonymity, uh, Amnesia supports KM-anonymity. KM-anonymity is uh, targeted to sparse multidimensional data. In the previous data example, uh, you had two relational tables. Uh, these are common tables for 
databases that have structured information where each record has a fixed number of, of fields and every field is completed with information. But this is not the most uh, common case in uh, applications. For example, if you just have uh, data from a retail store, from a supermarket where different people went there and, and bought different types of products, now I don't have exact products or uh, I just have product categories to have a simple example. Then you get records that uh, each record that refers to each person uh, might have uh, bought or interacted with just a few items from a very large domain, right? A supermarket has uh, 20,000 products and you have bought like 20 or 30 different. Um, K-anonymity relies on making uh, these records identical. And if you try to make identical the uh, uh, bills from a supermarket, you actually lose every kind, uh, uh, all uh, useful information. So K-anonymity comes here and tells you, you do not need to make the whole record identical, but just guarantee that every combination of M different values appear K times uh, in the whole data set. This means that if a third person knows M products that you bought from a supermarket, then it will always have K candidate uh, rec uh, records uh, at the anonymized data. So in this way, it's a weaker form of anonymization, but uh, uh, because the privacy guarantee is not as strong as K anonymity, but at the same time, it allows you to make some a meaningful anonymization of uh, this multidimensional data, which is not uh, achievable uh, in, uh, else. Um, so you can see an example here now, a third person that knows uh, that any of these Vasilis or Manolis bought two specific products in the anonymized record, it will always find two records that have bought these two products. And th this is the guarantee. Um, there are several weaknesses. Uh, again, I will not go to the whole technical detail. I think it goes beyond the scope of this webinar. But if you have any question, then we can discuss it in the Q&A later, or just feel free to contact me uh, through Amnesia Help Desk or through my email. and. I can give you more detail on when one guarantee is better suited than the other. Um, okay, this is how uh, the method works for K anonymity. I will not get K anonymity, I will not get into that. Uh, just to uh, close with the limitations of amnesia, uh, these are things that uh, we know by design or through our experience from the help desk. Uh, one big limitation that's uh, true for Amnesia and for other uh, data anonymization tools is that users are still not familiar with anonymization techniques. So they do not know exactly what to expect from a tool. And this is actually makes difficult in guiding them uh, because it's not just next, next. Uh, choices have to be made in different uh, the stages of the anonymization process, and someone has to be aware of uh, what the steps are to uh, to be able to apply the anonymization techniques effectively. Um, Amnesia cannot decide itself on the privacy parameters. This is a question that uh, comes quite often. What's the best uh, value for K? Should I use this privacy guarantee or the, or the other? These are not choices that can be um, uh, can be taken automatically at least, or even to have suggestions at least at this stage. Um, my advice on this is uh, to follow as a rule of thumb what uh, statistical authorities do, like Eurostat or your local statistical authorities. They do not anonymize the data, but they used to have uh, rules about uh, the granularity of information that is, pub uh, that is published. For example, they publish aggregate information for groups that have at least uh, three or five entities inside them. So this could be a guide on how to set uh, K for uh, uh, the anonymization process uh, for anonymizing a specific data, a specific data set. And the last thing is uh, 
at the moment we have k anonymity and km anonymity and we will add differential privacy each different privacy guarantee protects the data set in a different way and allows for uh, different types of, uh, of inferences to be made. Again, this decision has to be taken by the DPO and they need to understand uh, what exactly is protected and what is not. Uh, so the, mainly um, amnesia uh, limitations, uh, highlight some limitations of anonymization and what, what can be automated and what cannot. Uh, so that was all the presentation. And I think uh, we have time. So I, may, I will make a small demo on how Amnesia works. So I will stop sharing and share again. The, makes the data set in a different way and allows for uh, different types of, uh, of inferences to be made. Again, this decision has to be taken by the DPO and they need to understand uh, what exactly is protected and what is not. Uh, so the, mainly um, amnesia uh, limitations uh, highlight some limitations of anonymization and what, what can be automated and what cannot. Uh, so that was all the presentation, and I think uh, we have time, so I may I will make a small demo on how Amnesia works. So I will stop sharing and share again. The... Okay, this is uh, Amnesia. Uh, this is the first screen that uh, you see when you open it. And the for this example, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, try again. Okay, I think it it works now. So the first thing you need to do is load the data uh, a data set. Um, we have several uh, Amne uh, amnesia works with uh, uh, several known uh, data storage managers like Zenodo and Dataverse Server. Uh, so these are two options. Uh, it has a specific function for. Uh, pseudonymizing uh, DICOM uh, images, which is under development. This is one of the newest tools uh, that have not talked about it. Uh, what we're going to do here is that uh, we're going to load from local storage. And I have this uh, comma delimited uh, file. And here it has an import wizard, which is you know similar to, for example, Excel. Uh, import uh, wizard where you just put the delimiter. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Manolis. Can you zoom a little bit because we can't read or see uh, clearly? Mm, if it is I'll possible see. to zoom a little bit. Thank you. You yeah. see now, you see now, yes, by yes, the, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Okay, so you have these records that are delimited. I use a delimiter. I will use the simplest anonymization example, which is k-anonymity. The other methods uh, for disk-based anonymization, k-anonymity, and so on. But here we will treat this as a simple table. Now, these are simplified uh, and synthetic medical records that uh, came from some uh, that resent uh, UK medical records. 
So the diagnosis codes uh, that for which for this example we're going to treat them just as one value. Uh, amnesia has uh, the ability to treat them as different values. So they're actually set value which because they're an arbitrary number of def different diagn diagnoses. Um, we have direct identifiers that will be unchecked and actually removed uh, from uh, the resulting data. And then we have the date of birth of a patient and their marital status. Now, just by removing this uh, the two fields, uh, we can consider that the data are pseudonymized, but we're going to go beyond that and uh, actually anonymize the data. So remove the fields and we're ready to go on with uh, anonymization. We do have some options about masking, uh, but these are connected to uh, pseudonymization scenarios that uh, I'm not detailing here, but if you want, you can just pseudonymize your data with amnesia. Now, we're going to proceed to the most complex uh, uh, action that's needed for, by the user, which is uh, the creation of uh, these rules about generalizing values, about replacing them with uh, more uh, generic ones. Uh, we call this uh, generalization hierarchy. Now, with Amnesia, we can create, uh, store, and reload um, this kind of anonymization rules. And I'm demonstrating here how uh, these are depicted and what they are. Uh, since this was uh, based on real data and they had the marital status and the patient or the doctor could write up uh, any value brought forward by the patient, uh, there's, there was no uh, norma uh, normalization of fixed values. So somebody was uh, was uh, importing no at the marital status, uh, uh, and the, uh, more information or less than needed. So this was a way to group them to two different uh, marital status, which was single and married, and then these uh, group to any. This is a very simple uh, two-step uh, generalization hierarchy. Now, Amnesia can help you auto-generate a hierarchy, which works best for continuous values like age, salaries, or even dates, which is the most complex, uh, uh, the most complex continuous value that uh, we have. So what Amnesia does it is it will read, you will choose, uh, uh, you will choose a, an attribute of the data that you loaded. I chose date of birth. It knows its type. It, it proposes a, a type of uh, hierarchy and a type of variable, and uh, it will calculate itself uh, the lowest and the biggest uh, value that the, the minimum and the maximum values that exist in the data set. Uh, you need to give a name for this uh, hierarchy, and then what will it, it, it will work like this. Uh, if you have values from a continuous domain, uh, think of a simpler example first, like uh, the age of a person, right? You can say that, you know, make age categories of uh, uh, that split ages in five year ranges. So you have zero to five, five to 10, and so on. And then create a tree by grouping these age categories uh, by two. So uh, original values will be replaced if needed by these ranges. Five to, uh, 0 to 5, 5 to 10. And then uh, the algorithm is creating more rules where each uh, category of the previous level will be grouped. Each two categories of the previous level will be grouped in one category of the next level. So 0 to 5 and 5 to 10 will be grouped together in 0 to 10. And then in the next level, 0 to 10 and 10 to 20 will be grouped together on 0 to 20 and so on till you cover the whole domain. And this creates a simple hierarchy where the algorithm uh, that the algorithm can use to replace the original values. Now, for dates, this is more complex because we do not use the decimal system for dates, right? We have weeks that have seven days. We have months that do not have exactly uh, four or five weeks, but something in between. And then we have years that have 12 months. So 
Uh, we define the ranges in all three of these uh, levels. We tell the algorithm to group days uh, in groups of seven, uh, then group months in groups of three, and then group the months in groups uh, of one year. And from then on, where we use the decimal system about, uh, for years, uh, group the years, uh, group each category, uh, two categories to one uh, at each level. And it creates a hierarchy like this. Now, these are seven day periods where the exact dates will go here. Uh, the seven day periods are grouped to three month periods, three month periods, four three month periods, a group to one year. And then we have uh, two, year, uh, two year periods, four year periods, eight year periods, 16 year periods, and so on, till the whole domain is covered. And this has been auto generated just by the instructions that uh, I gave to, to the algorithm. Now that we have created the hierarchies, we go to data anonymization uh, view and uh, we instruct the algorithm to choose uh, to anonymize the date of birth using the uh, dates hierarchy that we just created, to, uh, to generalize marital status with the marriage hierarchy that we loaded, and then to produce uh, a two anonymous uh, data set. Now, the algorithm will present us the whole solution space uh, where the whole solution space is uh, all different combinations of uh, generalization that can happen to these two attributes, the dates and the marital status. Each node rep represents uh, how many times uh, each of these three attributes has been generalized. Here we know that the date of birth has been generalized three times. It went to level three in our generalization hierarchy, and the marital status has been generalized to uh, uh, twice. Blue nodes respond to solutions that uh, provide us uh, the, the privacy guarantee that we wanted, and red nodes are solutions that do not provide uh, the uh, privacy guarantee that we ask, the two anonymization. The reason that uh, these are provided by uh, the algorithm is that in some cases, let me see if this is one. Um, yes, uh, we do not, that, despite having generalized uh, three times the date of birth and once, uh, the marital status, we cannot put all records in groups of two, but uh, we, we managed to put 99.8 of the records in groups of two, and it's only 0.2% uh, of the records that do not fall in these groups. So instead of further generalizing the data, what we can do is just delete this 0.2% uh, of the records, and get an anonymous result by throwing out some outliers, uh, but at the same time saving the quality of the rest of the records. And then get, you get a result like this, um, where the exact dates have been replaced by two year periods. The exact responses to marital status have been replaced uh, by uh, the first generalization we had in this hierarchy, the married or single. And you have a guarantee that each, uh, uh, each record here, its combination of date of birth and marital status appears at least two times. So anyone seeing this record, which uh, this data set, which is the anonymized data set, will always have two candidate records for each person uh, that it knows in advance. And let me see if we can find an example here. Okay. Uh, well, if you go through all the pages of the data, you will find some, uh, some of them marked with red, which will be the records that have been removed uh, due to the last uh, step of processing we took, the suppression. And this is all. You save the data set and uh, anonymization is all. So 
this was all my presentation. Uh, I would be happy to respond to Q&A now, and you can also reach me through my email that you will see in the presentation and through Amnesia Help Desk. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manolis, for your uh, presentation. And now I'll open the, the floor to all the participants if you have questions to address to the to Manolis, feel free to to do it. So um I have two questions, but uh, they are related more with with the service. Um how is the percentage of use? of the of this tool do you do you have and and uh, and what what is the feedback from the users uh, that you get um when when they are using this uh, amnesia um I, i'm sorry i didn't get the first question the percentage of the views um, uh, what is the if you have a percentage of use of amnesia and what is the feedback you receive from the users um, I, I have the, the numbers of views, which were um, the totals were the ones I showed before, the uh, 110k visitors and 400k views uh, at the last few years that it's up. Uh, the feedback we get, we usually get the problems, right? In the help desk. Yes. You don't get mails, I used it and it's great. Uh, <laughs> get, I'm trying to use it and it doesn't work. Uh, Okay. So, uh, the difficult uh, main difficulties are on loading uh, the data set and how you arrange uh, and how you fix uh, the values. And then there are some cases, uh, usually not from uh, uh, the, uh, the individual users that come to us come with some problem, which usually ha has to do with the first phase, which is loading the data. And then it works for them or maybe with loading the hierarchy or creating one, uh, a few of them. But usually once they do this, they can anonymize the data and they do not come with the questions about anonymization itself. Uh, with questions about an anonymization itself, they usually come from companies. We do get uh, requests in Amnesia Help Desk uh, to present the tool and so they can see um, how they can use it. Uh, there are two, two kinds here for companies. The consulting companies that come to us and they want to know what Amnesia can do so they can uh, integrate it. The... Or, 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 yeah, so use it part of a solution about privacy protection that they will offer to clients and tell them we can protect your data and for the anonymization, you can use this. And we have companies, uh, big companies themselves that want to use it internally. And they come to us uh, asking uh, how they can uh, they can use it and what exactly it does. In this presentation, uh, we can uh, uh, presentations usually uh, they need to understand what anonymization is. They, it's not clear to them uh, th that you have to provide this statistical guarantee. That's why always in the presentation. Uh, I put a lot of effort in explaining what anonymization is before explaining what Amnesia does. Uh, so this is most of the feedback uh, we get. Uh, I see also, also the question, uh, yeah. at the moment we, we support just uh, for simple data, just CSV files, any kind of delimiter, but uh, CSV files. If you think SPSS data sets are important as a format, uh, for us, it's not difficult to add more formats, but usually because um, um, for most uh, data management programs, it is, it's easy to export uh, CSV files. We stay with, uh, uh, with CSV files. I see next question about the limiting volume. Uh, the limitation, uh, this algorithm that I showed you, the most simple one, uh, keeps all data on main memory. So the limitation comes from main memory. It's not hard coded. If your data set is very big, then uh, you might get uh, an error message. We have a, uh, another algorithm, the disk-based uh, algorithm that has no limitation. If your data, uh, your data file 
feeds to the disk, then uh, we can anonymize it. Uh, the, uh, so it can work for very big data. Uh, the most, uh, uh, I think the hardest constraint is on the size of the hierarchy. In uh, some cases, you can have hierarchies with millions of values. Uh, we do have, I did not show you in this scenario, but if you use uh, the ontologies from the internet as hierarchies, for example, hierarchy for the ICD, the diagnosis codes, it can have thousands uh, of values. So you can have even larger ones with millions of values. Uh, there, uh, there's no disk-based method. It has to fit in memory. If you have a hierarchy with millions of values, which is not quite common, then you would need uh, to have um, enough memory for your computer or for the Java, uh, the Java virtual machine that answer. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if uh, there's any more questions. Um, but if someone is using uh, Amnesia tool and have some questions, I think uh, Manolis is also sharing the, the help desk email, the help desk at OpenAir at EU. I, I think you use the, the same service uh, that OpenAir is using and you receive all the questions through uh, yes. the help desk service. Yes. So I can leave here the, the email. And I would be very happy if someone uses it to anonymize a data set, to provide us some feedback, if they were happy with the result, if the result uh, had the problems, or if they wanted um, uh, so, uh, something, uh, diff uh, something different. Uh, so uh, even if it's not actually a problem of uh, amnesia, please contact the help desk to let us know about the quality of the result or your experience from using it on a project. Yes, thank you so much, Manolis. I also thank left in the uh, in the chat um, some links for the Amnesia website, for the guide and the fact sheet, and the Amnesia video tutorials. There are also available in YouTube. So, so uh, you have here all the materials and the support materials uh, that may help you and um, to to try and test this um, this uh, powerful tool. So. Thank you so much again. If there are no, oh, there's something thanking you in Portuguese. <laughs> you uh, um, the, the opportunity. So um, if there is no more questions, thank you so much again, Monolis, for being here and for your uh, thank you, Paula, so detailed, for so detailed, so detailed explanation. And uh, have a nice weekend and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Too. Thank, thank you. you for organizing this and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much.